Well, this is a story about bowerbirds. I have followed them for many years, but in recent times they have become particular favourites. I've noticed this tends to happen when you spend a lot of time with the species. I spent a lot of time with lyrebirds, those marvellous songsters and mimics that haunt the rainforests of the coast and provide hours of interest and entertainment, particularly in the winter time. There are lots of rainforest remnants in New South Wales, particularly in my home region, so access is convenient. I've spent many hours with the water bird, especially the migrants from the Arctic Circle, which arrive here for a summer of foraging before returning to the north in March. Again, my home region provides lots of lakes, swamps and wetlands, though sometimes a trek along estuaries is required. And when you carry camera, tripod, telescope, binoculars, a portable hide and chair, it can require a level of fitness and stamina of which I have less than the optimum required. Now, with a knee that no longer gives reliable service, I am mostly limited to watching the many birds that visit the garden. For several years we were favoured in season by lots of red browed finches which were provided with just enough food in a protected feed tray to return for half hour every other day. Then they stopped coming, discouraged by little wattle birds that attacked them in sight as they did to every other bird species that came, not only honeys that were competition for food. They had difficulty though with bossy rainbow lorikeets, particularly when they operated as a gang. On occasion, two or three king parrots came and learned they could get a little seed from my hand or table, which also provided great pleasure. Now it's the bowerbirds, which recently decided my garden was a suitable playground. They tend to be wary here, but in some places, like Northern Australia, the greater bowerbirds are so common, they can develop to be picnic scavengers, as they appear to be a catherine. The males are pretty drab, 
except for a small violet nape crest which is revealed when performing courtship routines. Probably the most striking of the eight species here in Australia though is the regent which inhabits only about 1300 kilometres of the central east coast. Their black and gold raiment demands immediate attention when they suddenly appear. Our satin blue is found from the coastal regions of southeast Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Before they appeared in my garden, I had many favourite sites to visit in my home region, which were consistently used year after year by the same birds. Late last year, a young male decided my garden was a suitable place and built his first bower. For a while, I had two blue males here at the same time, and the senior one took a lot of interest in the young male's new bower. I think eventually he decided he was an unwelcome competitor. This is my young male's story. What is he doing? Maybe he got a touch too much of the sun. Or maybe he is just learning his craft, practicing his lines. It will be at least two more years before he is ready. Then he will have a splendid dark blue satin tuxedo. He'll have a proper decorated theatre and a proper stage. He will have his oratory word perfect. He's hoping his big public performance will be stunning. He is hoping the girls that come to watch his performance then will find him irresistible. After a workout like that, he needs a bit of breakfast.
Half a guava fruit, or what's left of it, will hit the spot. And then, back to work. 